All right. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Nora Bloom. I'm with Travel Leaders. And today we have Joe Sieb from Princess, who is going to talk to us all about Alaska and specifically an itinerary for a cruise out of Vancouver. Is that correct, Joe? It is. It's something brand new for us in 2023. And uh, it's an exciting new itinerary. And we haven't had it my entire career with Princess. So I'm in particular and personally excited about it as well. So should we get started? Let's go. So 2023, we have a great deal to offer, and but we're, we are going to focus on this single itinerary round trip Vancouver of either 10 or 11 nights. Uh, and uh, But like Nora knows, every time I tell a princess story, I start with our shared purpose as a company as and as individual employees. And it is that uh, simply that to uh, our shared purpose as employees to share our world. Today, it's Alaska. Even being in more particular, it's the round trip Vancouver itinerary. Share our hearts, protect the earth, which really means reducing the environmental footprint that we leave behind. And in the case of Alaska, we actually have invested millions of dollars in the port of Juneau. And for environmental reasons, we actually turn the ship's power off. We turn the key off, I'm simplifying it, of course. And we plug into local power to reduce any any uh, uh, pollution concerns or and, and help out that way and to create lasting memories. Our goal, regardless of what we do, whether it's create a new itinerary like this one, a new port of call, a shore excursion or some sort of a new uh, venue or entertainment on board the ship, it's always designed to create lasting memories. And when you come home and share those lasting memories with your friends and neighbors, then we know that we've accomplished what we've set out to. Uh, later on in the presentation, I have a personal example of that. So we know as uh, from all studies, glaciers is really the number one reason we want to go to Alaska to see and experience Alaska. And by all means, please know that we're going to deliver that to you on this itinerary and every other itinerary in Alaska. And our ships, as you can see from the, uh, this photo, our ships are built for destination cruising with pl plenty an ample public deck area. Nora, that's really key. Uh, mm -hmm. You know that, you've been to Alaska. When you're right. visiting glaciers, when you're viewing glaciers, where do you wanna be? You wanna be outside. You wanna be wanna hanging be, on the rail. That you wanna be right on deck. And hopefully we're gonna be able to show you not only uh, uh, whales, but maybe some other wildlife as well. Uh, but numerous times during the ship, it'll be announced that there might be whales on the left side or the right side or on the port side and a quarter of a mile. Uh, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to experience the whales uh, live as well. So uh, something we do on board the ships that's really helps deliver Alaska and bring Alaska on board the ships is what we call our North to Alaska program. Anytime you see that logo or you, anytime you see uh, anything advertised as North to Alaska, it's part of our onboard enrichment program where we are delivering uh, Alaska on board the ship. It might be just uh, 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 viewing glaciers. It might be like this nice young couple here is experiencing uh, a sled dog mushers, sled dog puppies that he has brought on board the ship while we're in port in Skagway. So some, some, some sailings, there'll be a real life dog musher board the ship tell some stories and bring their puppies on board the ship too. And many other experiences like that, designed again to bring the culture of Alaska on board the ship and really add to your overall experience. And that really helps uh, those three words, those three key words, create lasting memories. So uh, just a couple of things about Princess and then we're gonna jump right into this itinerary today. We were founded in 1965, we're headquartered in Los Angeles. We've been cruising Alaska since 1969. So this coming summer will be year 54. So we've been there going there for a long, long time. A few minutes ago, before we started, Nora and I were visiting about the uh, uh, TV reality show, uh, uh, The Real Love Boat. And uh, if any of you are old enough to remember the original Love Boat show, that was uh, uh, Princess Ships were the backdrop for that show. So it was really exciting. A couple of, of the real highlights that stand out about Princess, in particular, Alaska, 
is that this enriching experience we offer on board the ship and also the employees. Many of the employees uh, uh, in Alaska are local Alaskans, but we, we tried to do some Alaska training uh, uh, before we before the ships arrive Alaska in the summer, just to provide that much more insight to our customers. So round trip Vancouver is our key and our, our itinerary that we're focusing in on today. It's where you will begin or end in Victoria, or excuse me, Vancouver, British Columbia, where you would fly to uh, Vancouver to begin your trip in most cases. If you're able to add a day to your vacation, and uh, fly a day before the cruise or even two days, you'll, you'll enhance that experience a great deal. We cruise as far north as Hubbard Glacier in most cases. There's a couple of small variations. Uh, and then we cruise back to Vancouver. So this is a 10 or 11 night sailing on Crown Princess, round trip Vancouver. Again, it's new for Princess, it's new and exciting. Uh, we haven't had this in the past. So there are there is a 10 day version that I will kind of focus on in my example coming up. There's also an 11 day version as well. The 11 day version, the main differentiator is that we have one additional port of call in Victoria, British Columbia. Otherwise, they're quite similar, if not the same. All right. So walking through a sample trip, you'll fly to Vancouver and begin your trip. The ship will set sail right from downtown Vancouver at a pier called Canada Place. The ship will set sail late in the afternoon. We'll be at sea our whole first day. You can't beat that. So some of the things you might do if you haven't cruised before is certainly explore the ship. Uh, maybe enjoy some uh, gambling if, if you're so moved. Uh, great entertainment. Uh, if you're interested in a spa treatment, make sure you reserve those and pre-reserve. Not Nora's agreeing with me yep. uh, ahead of your cruise. Spa. And what day do people want to have their spa treatments? They always want to do it when you're at sea. Okay, so keep that in mind. There's only several days at sea, so you'll you'll definitely want to do that. Our first port of call, which is rather new for Princess, we've only called on Sitka occasionally over the years. It's a port of call with uh, really a quite small, robust little port uh, with uh, a strong Russian uh, influence. Uh, it was the, actually the very first port of call I ever went to on my very first trip to Alaska years and years and years ago. I just was just perusing some of the shore excursions. There's a real neat, neat one called the Ghosts of Historic Sitka, and it's a guided walking tour. It's actually one of my favorite things to do in ports of call around the world, and that is to go on guided uh, walks. I feel like you really get up close to the destination. And the guides bring, bring bring it to life. You know, there's so much history and they tell such great stories. I agree, those walking tours are tremendous. Then, uh, then in most cases, we're gonna visit uh, uh, Dawes Glacier in some cases, but most of the time Hubbard Glacier. Uh, so we go all the way north to the Northern port, part of our itinerary first. And then we visit in most cases, again, Hubbard Glacier. That's Hubbard Glacier on the right-hand side of the ship. Hubbard Glacier is six miles wide at the water. It's a tidewater glacier, which means that when the uh, ice breaks off, uh, it falls into the water. That's kind of the lay term for tidewater glacier. Uh, and again, it's six miles wide, so it's hard to really put things into perspective. It begins 76 miles inland. If that ice that we see that's calving right there was ice that was formed at the beginning of the glacier, 76 miles inland, it would be 400 years old. All right, then we're at Icy Strait Point, which is another newer port for Princess. We haven't called on Icy Strait Point too much over the years. We're starting to now. It's new and exciting. It's qu quite a bit more remote than the other ports of call, a little bit more rustic. You can see that, that, uh, that uh, mountainside there. I'm told there is a zip line down that uh, shore excursion zip line of five minutes long. I don't do zip lines. I don't think I'm going to, but people that do tell me five minutes is an extraordinarily long zip line. So by all means, there's also a tram right across uh, the mountain as well. Uh, shore excursions that might include bear watching or, or whale watching as well. Juno, our next port of call, 
uh, offers you a chance to go on a small boat to do whale watching, uh, an opportunity to, to see a glacier inland called uh, Mendenhall Glacier, and also one of the real highlights of our North to Alaska Onboard Enrichment Program is when Libby Riddles, the first female Iditarod champion, boards the ship in Juneau and conducts a personal presentation on her exploits in Alaska as, a, as the first female Iditarod champion. So that's Libby Riddles right there. She's a good friend of Princess's and does an outstanding presentation on board the ship. Uh, if you see a shore excursion that's not only described as fishing, like this one is, but one that's also described as cook my catch and part of our North Alaska program, you can have your, you can catch fish, tell the, the uh, shore excursion operator that you'd like to have it prepared for you on board the ship. We'll do just that. And uh, let me back up a moment. This is a stock photo. This is not my real fish, but this is the fish that my family caught a few years ago in Alaska. And uh, it was served to us at dinner that night. Uh, the picture doesn't really do it justice. This platter was four feet long and uh, a second table had to be brought out to our dining room table to, uh, because there wasn't room on her table for the platter. So it's really one of these things, again, those three words, great lasting memories. This is number one for us on that trip. Skagway, our next port of call. There are some variations to the itinerary, but so keep that in mind, if you will. But Skagway is the port of call known, known for the gold rush of 1898. The most famous shore excursion in Alaska is the White Pass Scenic Railway. Uh, have you done this, Nora? I have. I have. In fact, I did it with you. Oh, I know. It was many years ago. That uh, was, uh, I can't remember which ship that was on, but yes, I do remember that now. I, I think it was the Don. I think it was. What? Yes, I forgot yes. all about that. And uh, <laughs> at 2,500 feet of the 3,000 foot climb, you can uh, look over your left shoulder and you can see the ship down in the port. So it's really quite amazing. Here's a personal photo leaving Skagway, photo taken through binocular lenses. Uh, it's uh, something I urge uh, everybody I talk to to do is upon leaving Skagway, maybe 30 minutes out of port, go up to one of the top decks, go to the rear of the ship. This will be your view. It's really quite spectacular. Catch a can, uh, our last port of call typically uh, is known for its totem poles uh, and also known as the fan, fan, uh, salmon fishing capital of the world. But it's a great port of call just to walk around in and experience it on your own. When we dock in uh, Ketchikan, we're 50 feet from downtown Ketchikan, 50 feet from Main Street. You disembark the ship. You can pick up a self-guided uh, walking map if you like, or you can purchase a shore excursion that might take you out to the Saxman Indian Village to see uh, totem poles. You can see totem pole carvers at work as well. And then we're cruising through the inside passage the entire last day. It's a phenomenal way to kind of wrap up your trip. Uh, and it always seems to be 60 degrees and sunny going through the inside passage. It's a great day to visit with newfound friends or kind of wrap up your vacation and relax as we uh, return and, and end up back in Vancouver, right downtown Vancouver where we started. So 10 days round trip or 11 days with an added port, typically Victoria. Uh, and there you have it, a brand new itinerary, new and exciting. Uh, we also offer, and Nora and her staff uh, are able to really work with you on every uh, or on any Princess Alaska cruise or cruise tour itinerary, many, many to choose from, uh, and uh, many start or end in Vancouver. So a couple of questions that oftentimes comes up is when's the best time to go to Alaska? And that's really a, a question that's just really best discussed with uh, one of your travel advisor when you, when you call Nora's office. Uh, but by all means, um, if you go in the early part of the season, there'll be still snow in the lower elevations and Alaska will be cool and crisp. As you wait uh, into the middle of the year, the, the long days are, are uh, amongst us and uh, you'll see the big uh, flowers and 
toward the end of the year, you might see some fall colors as well. Packed to dress just like you would expect to pack for an Alaska vacation, packed to dress in layers. There are two nights of the, sh of the sailing that are formal and five nights that are called smart casual or, or uh, eight or 10 nights, depending on the length of the sailing. After you've made your purchase, you'll visit with, uh, with your travel advisor and decide if you wanna buy insurance or air. But after that, shore excursions in the ports of call are additional. Specialty dining on board the ships, on board the ship is, a, is additional. Wi-Fi crew appreciation, formerly known as gratuities and beverages are additional as well. However, we have a wonderful package where you can pre-purchase all of that. Uh, and then documents, uh, passports are typically required. Uh, I don't really think you'd wanna be without one. Am I right, Nora? That is correct. Yeah, yeah. Because and you'll then, be flying into Vancouver to get there, you'll definitely need your passport. That's right, of course we will on this one, yeah. Uh, and then um, recommendations are, are such that, uh, it seems like a long ways off, but that we're right in the key, most popular booking time for Alaska 2023, or for any any year, uh, this time of year is the, is the booking period. We have a couple of great promotions going on right now. One that's just been announced. I don't even have the details yet, where you can go on this 10 day sailing for the price of a seven day sailing, a comparable voyage. Wow. So that's one. Uh, number two is we have another promotion that lasts until the 21st of November for bookings made by then, which include uh, a shore excursion credit. Uh, and so there's a number of great things going on right now. So by all means, um, reach out to Nora's staff. I'm going to have you kind of help wrap up, Nora, and uh, let's all experience these glaciers. I love it. So I don't see any questions in the chat or uh, in the Q&A. You can put them in there if you'd like, or you can reach out to our team. So um, wherever you got your email to invite you to this, you can email that and we can get back to you. My email is Nora, N-O-R-A, at tvlleaders.com, or you can call our office, 763-231-8870. And yeah, we really look forward to sharing our expertise about Alaska with you and, and getting you on one of these beautiful ships to enjoy Alaska. So thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.